Have you ever wanted to grow your own crystals? Well, this week I'll be doing exactly that, using a classic science experiment to try and make some beautiful crystal trees to give my players an experience they've never had on the tabletop and one more beautiful than anything they've seen before. Okay, this is pretty damn cool. I remember this science experiment from when I was a kid, using this home cleaning ingredient called borax to make your own crystals. I did a little bit of research and realized that the base of this was hot water, borax and pipe cleaners. And I thought, I have those. Even better yet, I use pipe cleaners as the base for my trees, following the encounter terrain method of making trees for terrain and dioramas. Instantly, these two ideas combined perfectly to make some beautiful crystal trees. Or at the very least, coming up with a new way of making crystals for my terrain and dioramas. So, let's go to the lab and start the experiment. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is some pipe cleaners. The first build I'm going to go with these white pipe cleaners, as I think they're going to give me the best base that I can build my colour out of. Ideally, I'd love to do it with some brown pipe cleaners, but I haven't been able to find any. So, as I've shown in previous videos, we just start twisting up these branches, slowly separating them out. And now normally the next stage for these trees is to melt everything down with a lighter. By running the lighter over the fuzz, it pulls everything back to make a nice textured bark. In this case, I'm only gonna be doing the trunk and the bases of the trees, as I feel like the fuzzy part is what's gonna be grabbing onto the chemicals and causing the nice crystalline element but I don't want that over the entire branch and stick area of the tree. So while I'm going to try and set it up for a height, I'm also gonna try and cook some of this back and see if it makes a difference to what grabs and what doesn't. Again, this is a total experiment, so it'll be really interesting to see what happens. All right, so we've got our base tree there. Normally we'd make some roots and really make this a bit more like this. But in this case, we actually want this to be able to dunk into something like this. So. Well, I just jammed a super rough hole. Stick all of these through. That should work beautifully. Nailed it. And now it's time for the actual experiment. For this, we're going to need borax, food coloring, something to bring the whole thing to a heat. So let's take this over to the cooktop. All right, so we have our water on the boil. And since I've got no idea how much, I'm just gonna add a pile of borax. I don't know what's too much, but this is a $2 pot, so I don't care if it dies. So for this next part, we're gonna need a dyeing agent. In this case, I'm going with food coloring. I think this has had enough time now. We'll bring our solution over to here. Mix in some color. And let's see how this looks. Purple and magenta. And now let's see how this goes. That is perfect. And now that that's done, we leave that overnight. They say 12 to 24 hours for the best results. So I'm gonna put that over here and hopefully no one knocks into it. I have a second idea for a way to approach this that I actually just came up with. So we're gonna take a handful of these. I just punched a heap of holes in a paper plate. I'm gonna shove these through. I'll experiment with some black ones. If it works, great. And if not, I might figure something out that I can use for another build. Some more borax in. Whoop. Let's do blue. Stir 
night blue. And there we go, another build to leave for the night and see how it comes up tomorrow. These experiments are good fun, but I have literally no idea how they're gonna turn out. So, till tomorrow, these guys will have to just sit over in the side of the kitchen and we will see what happens. 24 hours later. So it's the next day and I've lost my lab coat, but we have the results to try out. So let's see how this worked and if we've got some crystal trees. First things first, let's see how this one went. Lucky this one was just an experiment because it got a little bit stuck to the base. It appears to be stuck. But I was also so excited with the results, I forgot to give any more commentary. So enjoy my excitement. Okay, this is pretty damn cool. Um, hang on. Look at that! Holy crap! So this batch ended up being really useful for some terrain pieces but I definitely overdid it with the depth of the pipe cleaners as they got stuck to the crystal around the base. This turned out so much better than I was anticipating. But these ones right here, look at that. That is perfect. The weight might be an issue though. Oh, these are incredible. Now it's time for the tree. This is the major part, the main build and the main element that I wanted to test for this entire thing. If this comes out right, I may have just come up with one of the coolest things that I have ever built. Tear it away, reveal what we have. <laughs> okay, a bit. It's break. All right, this is pretty cool for a first test. Look at that. So this experiment has been a wild success. I guess we're gonna have to wait till tomorrow and come back to see what the final result is like and how durable these things are gonna be. As for now, that is pretty damn hard. And I feel like anything that's built off the base of the pipe cleaners is going to be more than effective. So now that I've had my test, I've got a few ideas of how we can do this even better and I'm gonna see how well I can improve the build. That's awesome. There'll be a lot of residual crystal dried onto whatever implement you allowed everything to dry in, but don't worry, Adding a little bit of boiling water and giving this a stir will mix it all back up to a reusable solution. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and try mixing up the design of my tree now that I have a better idea of how the borax solution reacts. I'll put that on the boil and start twisting up my pipe cleaners. This time I've doubled them over and made some little circular loops on the top to really help grab the crystal. I'm putting this back through the same paper plate system I used before, and then I'll be dunking it in the freshly boiled solution for a 24 hour bath. 24 hours later. Oh yeah, this one worked out a lot better. The thicker stem by doubling over helps hold the weight and the circular ends really did help to capture the crystal exactly where I wanted it. And now it's time to shape the roots of the tree. We essentially just twist these up like we did the top branches and then burn them back with a lighter. This one turned out a lot better. It just needs a little bit of paint through the base of the tree to really give it a nice natural look and help make those crystals pop on the top. So I'm gonna grab a cheap brown acrylic paint and really just apply this quite thick over all of the tree before doing a quick dry brush in a towel light ochre. And now you could just leave them like this 
allowing for the bendy roots to hold them upright on the table, but I want to make a little bit of a display piece, using some of the extra crystals to really dig into the terrain. So I threw these together and built myself a nice little display. I'll be releasing another video later on this week showing the full build process of these display pieces. But for now, this total experiment has turned out to be a wild success, leading to one of the most beautiful things I think I've ever made to place down on my tabletop. And while they look good as is, I think I'm going to add some game inks to really help sell the crystal effect. By just soaking some of these in and wet blending a couple of different styles, these Vallejo game inks really help to show off the crystalline effects. These crystalline trees are amazing for any tabletop experience. Imagine a forest of these in the underdark, or a well-lit batch in a Feywild meadow, or just one single tree hidden away in the ruins of an ancient civilization somewhere in your world. I'm amazed at how well these things came out, considering no one I have seen has ever done this before. This is one of the coolest things that I've ever made and probably the coolest thing I will ever add to this hobby because I can guarantee none of your players will have ever seen it before unless they're subscribed to my channel. Or if someone's copied me by now, that'd be pretty cool. This total experiment worked out amazing. There are a few different versions of the tree but the final version that I came to is brilliant. This can be easily replicated and done by anyone even as an experiment with kids. This stuff is safe and it does seem to last in the long run. I've had these for about a week now and haven't had any issues with them breaking or falling apart. I'm going to run a few more experiments, but as you'll see in my next video, I also managed to paint these up using some different inks and it all held together quite nicely. These will work perfectly for different kinds of crystal in your terrain and it's great because you can make them yourself. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and remember, never stop making stuff.